What's the word, y'all? Very, very quick reaction um, to the Dallas Mavericks heading up to the NBA Finals. June 6th is going to be them in Boston, and it should be a great series. There's some animosity, not necessarily between the players, but the organizations. Because I know some Boston Celtics fans still hate Kyrie Irving after what he did on Lucky. I know some Dallas Mavericks fans still hate Chris Porzingis after he got traded. He was talking about he's happy to play for a team that allows him to do what he wants. Should be a good one. I could record this video like an hour and a half ago, if I'm being honest with you. But I gave the Minnesota Timberwolves the benefit of the doubt. Uh, I thought they may have had a run on them, be them being on their home court and everything back against the wall. They really didn't. It's kind of hard to come back in a game where the other team's best player drops more points in the first quarter than your whole team. But again, I gave them benefit of the doubt. Luka Doncic is being crowned Western Conference MVP in front of me. So shout out to Luka Doncic. I mean, to come out and have that level. Like Luka Doncic... Does an amazing, amazing job. When he decides that he wants to close the series, he's going to do it in some type of fashion. He's going to drop 20 points in 12 minutes. He gonna, um, he, he's going to beat a team by a million points. Like, he always does that. Does that. The one thing I hate about this, as a, as a neutral NBA fan, that it wasn't a fun game, necessarily. Like, when you see Luka Doncic drop 20 in the first quarter, in my mind, I'm like, ooh, can he drop 50? He didn't need to. Even though him and Kyrie Irving did combine for 72 uh, <laughs> did goodbye for 72, but he didn't really need to do anything super extraordinary after the first quarter. The ele electricity of the arena was sucked out when he hit his third logo three. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? Uh, so shout out to the Dallas Mavericks. It should be, again, extremely fun series. I thought there was a chance they could win the Western Conference. I'll be honest with you. I didn't think that chance was very, very high. So they made me a believer. I thought that this, the, um, and I'm being honest with y'all, I thought that the Denver Nuggets had a better chance. I, I mean, I picked against them. I picked them to beat the Clippers pretty easily. I picked against them against OKC. And I guess I picked against them in this series too. Hey, if, you, if you've been keeping track of this channel for the last seven years, I usually have a decent track record when it comes to picking series. And that's why I love this year or this era because we're, we're getting away from super teams. We're getting away from all this other, other stuff. We're getting in the age of parody. We're like, I can legitimately sit down and think about a series for three days straight trying to figure out who's going to win and still walk out and, and be wrong. This was my lowest field goal percentage of all time in the playoffs, and I'm not even mad at it because that just made it be a better experience for me where the team that was the, the, the team that I thought should be favored or the better team didn't end up winning or they didn't end up being the better team. The Minnesota Timberwolves looked like the better team based on their first two rounds. They were virtually unmesswittable. The first round, complete sweep. Second round, defeating the defending champions. They're riding the cloud. They're, they're riding the highest cloud you can potentially ride. And they get in this series. And they play against a guy like Luka Doncic. And that man, we talked about it on the Kenny Beachum podcast, that he is one of the few people in the NBA that you cannot scheme for. You basically have to hope that he missed his shots. You can argue that OKC kind of figured some stuff out with Luka Doncic to, to neutralize him, and that allowed P.J. Watson and Deere Jones Jr. and all these other people to have good series. Nonetheless, I do believe, I mean, you look at pretty much every series that he's played, He's, he's walked out as the best player in that series in like 95% of them. He's one of those dudes. And Minnesota came in with a game plan. And that's one of the reasons why I also hate that this wasn't like a super close game. Because I want to talk about the adjustments. There was no adjustments that even mattered because Luka Doncic just came out and put his foot on, the, on their throats immediately. Uh, but some of the shots he made, only thing you could do if you're Minnesota is tip your hat. But I was extremely pissed with Minnesota coming out the way that they did. Because Rudy Gobert has seven shot attempts in the first quarter. And that doesn't even account for the five other times he touched the ball. Like he should not have the ball that many times. We all know this. Everybody knows this. But somehow whether it be the Mavericks defense or the players not being ready for the moment ended up in Rudy Gobert's hands way more than it should have. I'm going to give I'm gonna give the credit to the Dallas Mavericks. I'm going to give the credit to the Dallas Mavericks. During the NBA Finals, they had great schemes. I'm going to give it all there. Uh, Minnesota Timberwolves fans, this is a phenomenal season, man. I mean, I, mean, to, I thought that y'all had a chance to be really good this year. I didn't think y'all had the chance to be the top seed for the majority of this regular season. I didn't think y'all had a, a real legitimate chance, I mean, going into it, to defeat. Like, if you would have told me in, in um, October, that eventually this this Minnesota Timberwolves team that didn't even make like no dramatic trade. It's not like they added somebody crazy to the deadline. Monte Morris was on the team, but he ain't even play really in the playoffs. Uh, J Mac got minutes over him today. So if you would have told me before the season started that the Minnesota Timberwolves would defeat the Denver Nuggets in a, in a playoff series, I would have called you crazy. Like this was a successful, successful season. But what I will tell you 
is you need to 100% gear yourself up for the rumors during this this offseason to be at an all-time high. With the team being near the second apron, with you guys having some ownership, whether it be a Glenn Taylor steal or would it go to A-Rod, Glenn Taylor's only played the, paid the luxury tax what, twice, once or twice throughout his entire career as the owner. And then there was a report that, that uh, Rodriguez and them might cut the salary. So... Just be prepared for a ton of rumors revolving around Cat, maybe even Nas Reed, a lot of different people. And will trades actually happen? I don't really know where their head is really at. But you just have to prepare yourself for this. And it sucks because you just made it to the conference finals and people are trying to take your team down. But that's part of the thing when we talk about Perry. And I'm going to mention this on the Kenny Beach and Podcast, uh, actually filming that right after this, that uh, there were some reports about some teams that we see as contenders and teams that we see as teams that can win a championship. But because of that second apron, they're going to have to change their team around. You can't just run it back as many times as you want when you have multiple, multiple max players. And the Wolves have Anthony Edwards max kicking in. You have Carl Anthony Towns super max. You have Rudy Gobert who's on a few few years left of his max contract and you gave Jaden McDaniels a bunch of money as well that's four near max player max slash near max players it's just a very expensive team and again I'm not saying y'all will make these changes but expect the rumors to be a really really high let's shift the gears again to the Dallas Mavericks to talk about this um because they they made a lot of people look like fools man they made a lot of people look like fools uh, when, when you think about the trades they did at the deadline you you acknowledge you go back and watch my video where we acknowledge the fact that a guy like pj washington and a guy like daniel gaffer objectively makes the team better but the question was when you're giving up as many draft picks for the future as they did are these guys the ones that's going to put you over the hump? And majority of people, me included, thought probably not. And yet, here we are. And a lot of that is Luka Doncic, obviously, as a star player and, and one of the best players in the world. But a lot of that, you think about the last couple series. I mean, okay, they don't beat the OKC Thunder in that series if P.J. Washington doesn't do what he does. Um, they don't win that series if Derrick Jones Jr. doesn't have that four three pointer game. Like some of these dudes that are on minimums or they just acquired the deadline paid played huge huge roles in what they're gonna do or what they've been doing. And the Kyrie Irving trade just looks crazy and crazier by the day. Spencer Dinwiddie, Dinwiddie, Fetty Smith, and what one first round pick in a swap. For Kyrie, who can drop 36 in a closeout game, and then going into the finals, is this going to be, man. So we got, a, we got a bunch of time before now in June 6th where I can really dive into it. And I don't think these two teams played each other after the deadline, so I don't really have any game tape to really look at. But what I will say is both of these teams are going to be going against an opponent that fits them defensively more than the previous opponents, right? So the the Celtics, we talked about the fact that uh, they went through a bunch of teams with injuries. Again, I don't really care about that. You're in the NBA Finals. That's all that really matters. But the Dallas Mavericks are more equipped to guard the Celtics than any other team they've played so far. I think that the that the Boston Celtics are more equipped to guard Luka slash Kyrie than any other team they, they've seen so far. So it's going to be a chess match. Missoula versus Kid. that might be the determinant fact on who wins this series. Again, I have an idea who I would pick and how many games, but I want to, want to go through it just a little bit more between June 6th. Leave a like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Dallas Mavericks are in the NBA Finals. NBA period is at an all-time high, and I absolutely love it.